so I decided to review the original Halloween, yet I just decided, you know what, I cannot be serious as a horror YouTuber unless I review this movie. It's, it's like a rite of passage, an initiation, you just have to do it. You know, I've done my research on this, I've looked around on the internet. So here it is, but how you review a film like this is, well, it's difficult, put it that way. So I've, I've just decided to just try and approach it as I would any other review. Be professional, get it done and move on. So I guess I'll start with the plot, a quick synopsis. So the plot of Halloween is, <laughs> I can't believe I'm explaining the plot of Halloween. Um, I, okay, so look, 99.9% .9 of you can just skip ahead 20 seconds. You don't need to see this or hear this part. Um, as for the 0.1% of you who haven't seen this film, who've been who've had their heads buried in the sand for the last 42 years, you might want to stick around and hear this part. Well, you know what? There could actually be um, a 13 or 14 year old who is just getting into horror and maybe has not seen the original Halloween, I suppose. If that's you, then you'll want to hear this part. But I don't necessarily endorse people your age watching horror films. In the case of Halloween, though, I will not tell your parents on this occasion. OK, so the plot of Halloween. There's a six year old boy and he murders his sister, at which point he becomes mute. He does this on Halloween, by the way. And so he gets committed to an insane asylum where he remains mute for the next 15 years. Then on another Halloween night, he breaks out and goes on a killing spree. And that's the story. And it's a very simple plot, but I think one of the reasons why this film is so universally loved is because it's such a simple plot. You can put this film on at four o'clock in the morning when you're drunk as a skunk and the film makes total sense because it's simple. And if you're the type of person who watches movies, just you'll just watch a film once and then move on and forget about it. You can enjoy this film as a just a decent horror slasher. But if you're going to watch it like every year, like I do, there's a lot under the surface that you can dive into a lot of plot that's sort of deeper down there if you want to go looking for it. Um, Michael Myers himself, why is he evil? Um, I think the most commonly put forward reason is because he's just pure evil and that's it. But if this is the work of the devil, then why does he not just speak at the asylum so he can be let out and, you know, do, do more damage from within society? Why does he remain behind bars where He's ineffectual, essentially. If it's the, is it the work of a cult? Not to give away some future subplot. Was he dropped on his head when he was a baby? Or was he abused by one or both of his parents? We just don't know. And, and Michael will never tell us. He'll, he'll take it to his grave. And, and then he'll climb out of the grave and go on another killing spree and still not tell us. I mean, John Carpenter could tell us and put the whole thing to bed. I guess if he's the right, he's entitled to sort of you know, have one last definitive say, and that's it. But I'm not sure if he if he's done that. I mean, but the, but there are other mysteries in this film as well. You know, just on a smaller scale, like how does Myers get out of the asylum? Um, there's just there's a lot that you can unpick, a lot that you can discuss with other fans, and that's one of the great things about this movie. Michael Myers himself, as an adult, is just one of the all time great killers. You know, he's got the he's got the mask, he's got the way that he moves, but I think. One of the scariest things about him that people don't mention that much is just how weird he is in this first film. You know, he's he's not a killing machine in the first Halloween. He occasionally kills people throughout the movie, but he spends much more time actually just demonstrating this really erratic, bizarre behaviour. And that's that's scary. You know, he, he's less a killer in Halloween 1 than he is just a weirdo who sometimes kills. So... Look at the stuff he does. He, he steals a tombstone for, for no reason. What is what is that setup meant to be for? He peers in at the schoolyard to look on kids that later on he's got no interest in killing. And he stops the car in the middle of the street and then drives on. But, but there's no strategic reason for that. I mean, that's just going to freak out the girls when presumably he wants to, to stay hidden. So... He, he is more of a weirdo in this first film, I think, than, than most of the sequels where he becomes more, more, more efficient. You know, I mean, there, there's quite a few times he, he has a chance to kill someone in, the, in this first movie and doesn't take it. So you've got a great killer 
Um, oh, at this point, I would just like to say my one criticism of this film, and I mentioned this in my um, best kills in, in Halloween 1 rankings list, which is in a different video, and that is the fact that there's, there's this one kill late in this film, and I won't say who it is that he kills, because that would be giving it away, but there's like a knife that's sticking into somebody, and it's sticking so far out of his chest that there's no way this knife could pass through this guy's chest and into the wall. And I think that was just a little mistake on Carpenter's part. But obviously it's... I mean, I want this to be a balanced review. I want to, you know, something's wrong, I'm going to point it out. And this is the one thing I can honestly say I think's wrong. I mean, I think if Carpenter heard me mention this point, he would probably tell me to do one. But, but you know, and you know what I would say? Yeah, you're absolutely right, John. I've got no business just mentioning something as, you know small smaller details that when you've done such a fantastic job on everything else but so we talked about Myers we could talk about the protagonist as well uh, Laurie Strode one of the great final girls and a lot of people would think that because yeah she, she's plucky and resilient um, and when she's escaping Myers in the second half of the film she, she she's so brave in everything she does she's dogged she fights back but earlier on, she's got some other great traits as well. She's brave. You know, she goes and investigates when she thinks something's wrong. She thinks her friends might be in danger. You know, so many other other characters in horror would look out that window at the house across the street and just go, oh, huh. and then go back to what they're doing, going back, going back to their babysitting or something. But not Laurie. She, she's brave and she goes over there. And earlier on in the film, even before, um, even taking out all the Maya stuff later on, earlier on in the film, when we're just seeing Laurie in a normal life, she, she's a very relatable character. You know, she's she's right in that headspace that, that a lot of people get into when they're 16, 17, where they, you know, they want to they want to date, they want to become more sociable, go to more parties and stuff. And for some reason, they just can't get through that barrier. And a lot of people can, you know, have, ex have had experiences like that. So we can instantly sort of relate to Laurie. When I first watched this film, I was 13. And I was right in the wheelhouse of how Laurie Strode feels in the first half of this film. So, brilliant character. Um, another character I'd like to mention is Haddonfield itself, because this is just one of the best places you can ever have a horror film. It looks amazing. <coughs> Pasadena, sorry. And um, you know what? There was this thing in the news years ago. When Avatar came out, um, it was reported on that some people had been had gotten depressed because they'd seen this amazing place in the movie Pandora and, and they seriously were depressed that they were never going to get to go there. That's a real story. And um, if I was ever going to feel that, it would be about Haddonfield because it's just the most amazing made-up location I've ever seen with all this, this beautiful trees, streets. I mean, I've not lived in bad places in my life, one or two dumps, but for the most part I've done okay, but Every time I watch Halloween, I just look at the earlier scenes with Haddonfield and think it's just the most incredible location. Um, I'd say another thing I'd like to say is that the scenes in this film, they're so consistently brilliant. Even the smaller scenes, uh, and, and everything is just so well micromanaged from, from first to last. If you pick out even the smaller scenes that you may think have no significance or, or not as much importance as, as the big chase sequences and stuff. So... Um, uh, Dr. Loomis meeting Brackett outside the store, for example. In another movie, this would just be two authority figures just, you know, getting together for a quick random chat and then moving on. But in Halloween, it's it, it, it suddenly becomes this really clever sequence where Myers is, you know, coming round the back with the car and everything's got to be set up right and timed right and a lot of thoughts got to go into the editing. And Every scene seems to have something that's that's clever or well written about it. Even the smaller scenes, you know, Lonnie and his and his mates trying to get into the the house. You could take that scene out of the movie and you wouldn't even notice it, even on a tenth viewing. But it's such a good scene for just giving Loomis that extra little bit of character. And all the way through the film, clever scene after clever scene, even the ones you wouldn't think are normally that big. So Loomis again at the um, at the railway crossing. I mean, that could just be a phone booth anywhere that looks crap. In Halloween, it's this incredible setting again. They've timed it so that the railway crossing goes off, and it's just just brilliantly written. And then you've got the, and if I'm going to talk about scenes, I'll finish off by talking the first and the last scene in the movie because it's not easy to write a good opening and a good ending to any story and in, in any medium. Yet in Halloween, you've got one of the best 
openings of all time and one of the best endings of all time. And when you've got those two things, you've got one hell of a potent movie. You know, the opening with the Judith kill is just one of the cleverest beginnings to any story you'll ever see. It's creepy, it's brutal, you don't know what you're watching. It's well filmed. And then you've got the ending, which with its sort of still pictures of, of these locations that a serial killer might be hiding. It's just the most pure ending to any film. It's just high art, it's brilliant. So when you're when you've got that at the start at the end and in the middle you've got brilliant serial killer brilliant characters especially one great protagonist you've got a great location you've got a situation where a director has written every scene so well you've got a masterpiece on your hands and that is halloween it is a masterpiece the word shouldn't be used lightly but in this instance it is and obviously i'm going to give it five bloody axes in fact fuck it i'm going to give it six no, I'll give it five. But no, it's a great movie and just one of the best films I've ever seen. And if you've not seen it, watch it. Okay? Simple as. Right. Until next time, see you later.